Hello, I'm John Bender Waffles Algis, and today we're talking Dem Skittles. Skills are incredibly important to Japanese style RPGs. Without them, battles would simply be people beating each other over and over until one of them died. It's not very exciting. Skills make battles interesting and introduce a strategic element to the gameplay. So now that we all recognize how important skills are, let's jump over to my computer and design a couple. Okay guys, so uh, getting into skills and abilities, we're just gonna go up here to the dashboard, choose the skills tab, and then we have our list of skills here. Just go to change maximum and increase it by one. So there you go, you've created a blank ability. Now some of these boxes are pretty self-explanatory, but we're still gonna go through them so that you can kinda get a feel for what goes into making a skill. So here's the name. This is obviously the name of the skill as it appears in the game. So we're gonna make a cure spell. So it's just gonna be called, whoops, I should probably learn to type. Uh, trying to do this one handed is a little bit of a pain. So cure is the skill that we're gonna be doing. Uh, we're gonna choose an icon. I'm going to go with the heart, so click OK, and then in the description box you just basically type in um, a basic uh, description of the spell, a basic cure spell. Skill type, this uh, determines sort of basically in what menu uh, you find the skill. So special magic, if you have another one, maybe there'll be another one down here, but that's all defined by your game. This is gonna be a magic spell though. So it's gonna cost MP. Um, when you're creating a, a spell, a skill, an ability, it can cost either MP or TP or some combination of both. For this spell, it's going to cost, um, we're gonna go 100 MP. Scope is what it hits. So it can hit one enemy, all enemies, you can go random, it can hit an ally, you can only target dead allies, all that sort of stuff. Um, we're gonna have it uh, basically just heal one ally. It's a basic heal spell. And then the occasion that it hits, or the occasion that you can use it, basically you can set it up so that you can only use it at specific times. You can only use it on the battle screen, you can only use it on the menu screen, or you can use it whenever you want, or never. We're going to go with you can use it any time, so if you're out on the field and you need to heal up before a boss battle, you can use the spell, um, all that sort of stuff. So, this sort of stuff, speed, this basically just affects uh, turn order. It, if you want the spell to take a really long time, you'll change the number, or if you want the spell to be super, super fast, you'll change the number. Um, success, this is how often it will hit if you want it to be that you use it and it works, leave it at 100%. You can have it so that maybe it maybe it's a spell that, let's say like within Pokemon, there are the one hit KO spells. Uh, so they are guaranteed to hit and faint a Pokemon immediately. They only have like a 10% uh, success rate or something like that. I don't remember the actual percentage, but you can do a spell like that and you can determine the success rate so that using a spell, there's a chance that it might fail. Kind of cool stuff. Repeat, if you want the spell to, once you use it, maybe it happens multiple times. So if you have like a uh, double fire or something like that so that it you fire out two fireballs. Um, kind of cool stuff. It will, it will just basically do the spell twice, it's pretty simple. And then TP gain, if you want using the ability to gain you TP, um, that's a cool way to do it. Hit type, this is pretty self-explanatory, it's just what type of hit is it. Um, and this, this goes into uh, if you have enemies that are immune to physical or immune to magical, uh, they won't be able to be hit, or it's a certain hit, it's going to hit, it's guaranteed to hit. Um, unless it fails, obviously, with the success. So animation, this is just what animation plays when you do it. We're going to go with recovery one, because cool. Uh, message, this is what displays on the screen when you use the ability. So it will always follow the format of username, so whoever's casting it, and then blank. You can type whatever you want here, or you can just click these buttons down here. So say we want it to say uh, blank cast, casts cure. So we'll, we'll click blam, so it will 
say the whoever's casting it casts and then the spell name required weapon if you want to have uh, this spell only be able to be used by people when they're when they have a specific type of weapon equipped this is the way to do it so say that we wanted uh, our person to have to have a sword equipped to do the spell then we can choose sword or if we want to have them be like you can use a sword or say a bow uh, then you can have two different weapon types for the case of this skill we're gonna have no required weapon now say that this was a damaging spell this one isn't but let's pretend for a second that it is you would have to do a damage formula so basically to start this off you just choose what type of damage it is it's going to be HP damage MP damage so like when you're doing MP damage it's like instead of hurting the person you're hurting their ability to cast spells which is kind of cool um, you can also do HP recover which is just an ongoing recovery thing where you can damage their HP drain all that sort of stuff uh, ba the basic most basic skills are HP damage spells and then you have to choose an element I mean you don't have to you can go none um, and so basically this plays into the whole what are things immune to what do things have weaknesses to um, putting an element onto it certainly helps and adds that level of strategic play uh, to your battles we're gonna pretend that it's a fire so actually you know what it's it's a cure so it'd be a, it'd be a holy element um, and the formula here this is where stuff gets a little bit complicated um, I'm not super great with formulas because uh, I honestly I don't do them that often but if you're if you're designing how much something uh, deals basically you have to create a formula so you do this by uh, determining the skills of the person who are casting it versus the skills or not the skills the stats of the person that it's being used against so let's say we were using against this against an enemy and we wanted to be uh, to take into account the user's magic attack so a denotes that it's the user and then you put a period and then the stat that you're looking at um, so let's do their magic attack times two. So that's going to take their magic attack skill and times it by two. And then we're going to do minus B, I believe it's MDF for magic defense. Let's see here. Yes. Um, so it's going to do, it's going to take the caster's magic attack times it by two and then minus the targets magic defense to determine the basic amount of damage that it's going to do then you come down here to variance this will take that final answer from that formula and apply a variance onto it so basically by saying 20 percent variance you're saying take that basic number and then add up to 20 percent to it or subtract up to 20 percent from it so you could have, let's say that this number cranked out uh, 18, random number. It could instead deal 20 damage, or it could instead deal 16 damage. It's, a, it's the um, a, amount of sort of swing. It adds a bit of uh, RNG to the gameplay, which, is, which winds up being a bit more interesting. Um, then you have your critical hits. As gamers, I feel like we all know what critical hits are. Um, can it hit and deal extra damage? Usually critical hits are about double. Um, it's just basically, uh, can it deal, can it, can you get lucky and have it deal massive amounts of damage? Um, so we're gonna click no. In fact, we're gonna, we're gonna be deleting all of this because we aren't even gonna be doing damage. We're gonna be doing healing via an effect. So we're gonna go down here and we're gonna double click. Now effects, these are all pretty, pretty easy to figure out you can do recovering HP MP TP you can add state you can do stuff that buffs you can remove buffs and then you have special effects here these this is where stuff gets a little crazy so with a special effect you can do escape there are other special effects that you can program in the default just has escape you can also do grow so this permanently increases a stat unlike buff that increases a stat for a certain number of turns grow it it 
it exists after this battle. It's not something that I would do that often. Maybe I'd put it on a item or during a boss battle. It might be kind of cool to like have them have an ability that permanently buffs their stats. But to kind of add in sort of an artificial timer onto your boss battle. But otherwise, I wouldn't um, I wouldn't use grow that often. Same with learn skill. This does exactly what it says on its face. It you use this ability and then you learn a skill. Um, I'd I'd put this onto an item, uh, like a skill book or something. And then common event. If you have common events written for your uh, project, you could execute them here. Uh, for the purposes of right now, we're just going to recover HP and we're going to recover uh, fifth. Oop, not fifty one. Fifteen percent of the target's HP. So click OK. You can also do multiple effects by just adding more and more to this list. Um, so there you go. It's going to recover 15 HP. And then go down here to Notes. And if you're using plugins like we're going to be showing you um, in a upcoming episode, um, you might be putting notes down in here, or you'll put notes in here for just your own use as game maker if there's something that you wanted to note maybe something like this skill is also used at a certain point in the plot you might put it in the notes just something that you can reference back to um, and the, your game project through plugins can also reference back here to the notes so there you go click apply and you've created a skill and remember as I showed in the classes one for you to be able to get the skill you have to have them learn it via a certain level up or maybe via the learn skill effect you know however skills are learned in your game you just have to set it up so that they learn it that way so there you go there you have it not hard at all next time we'll take a look at how to create and import custom tile sets for use within rpg maker you can click on this button over here to see if it's up if it's not though that button will instead take you to my channel where you can subscribe if you liked this video, give it a like and leave a comment down below. If you really liked it, consider supporting me directly via Patreon. Link for that is in the description box below. Thanks for watching guys and I'll see you next time when I have to tell the world that I am in fact Iron Man.